What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at templates and bootstrap for Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at templates and bootstrap, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time via just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna start to look at templating out our website, look at templates. We're gonna look at the Bootstrap CSS framework, and we're also gonna do a little bit of work on our root URL. So if we come back here and hit reload, we see we get an error. This is where we left off last time. So our root URL has changed. So in the last video, we set it up to where if we put 2021 and March, for instance, it pops up to this calendar page with March 2021. And we have this sort of redirecting back to the home page. But our home page URL, just our root URL, gets an error. So before we do anything else, we need to fix that. So let's head back over to our code and let's go into the events directory and look at our views.py. And the reason why we're getting this error is because in the last video, we changed our home view to be on the lookout for a year and a month, right? So when we come back over here and for instance, go to 2020 slash March, this year and this month get passed into the function right here, right? Well, if we go to the root URL, which is just nothing, we're not passing a year and a month in, so we get an error. And we can fix this a couple of different ways. So what we could do here is set this equal to something. So for instance, 2021, and we can set the month equal to something too. Let's say uh, March, right? So what this does is Django will say, hey, if something gets passed, take it. So if we go to the URL, localhost slash 2021 slash June, it'll use June. But if we don't, use these values, right? And you can put anything you want here. So March or 2021. So that should do it. And that's a Band-Aid fix. It's not the greatest thing to do, but it will work. So we've changed it here. Now we need to also go to our URLs.py file in our events directory. And remember in the last video, we commented this path out. And so we need to uncomment this path. So our root URL right here will point to views.home. And okay, so go ahead and save this and then go ahead and make sure this is saved. And now when we come back here and hit reload, boom, it works and it's pointed to March, 2021. Now that works, right? But obviously that's not a great solution. What we really want this to do is change dynamically based on whatever month it is. So let's say we want, it's February right now. So we want February to show up there but we don't wanna to have to type in February right there. Same thing here with 2021. We don't want to have to type in the year every year the year changes. We want this to be dynamic. So we can do that. See down here, let's see, we used date.now and we can use that again. So remember we imported date time up here and then date time.now will give us the current date. So instead of hard coding this in, we can go date time dot now dot year. So this will give us the current year. Same thing over here, instead of month, we can do date time dot now. And now we need to format out the month name. So to do that, we call dot strf time, and this is a function. And then here we can search for percent B, and that's that stands for month. If you're not familiar with date time stuff, uh, let's see, you can go to, I think it's datetime.org maybe. No, let's just go Python date time. And this is the Python docs for date time. If we search for percentage B, uh, let's see, should be able to find a list. There we go. Here's a list of all the different things you can search for. So this capital B will give you the month's local full name, for instance, like January, if you wanted just J A N, you would use lowercase b, stuff like that. We've done date time stuff in the past. So we could just do that. And now that should work and it should update dynamically. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, if we come back over here and hit reload, this should be February because it's February right now. And boom, February, 2021, very cool. Now note, this still works too. So we can go 2021 slash June, for instance, and we can still go to June. So, okay, that little thing is fixed. And now we can move on and talk about templates. So we've already looked at templates a little bit, right? We created this templates directory and we put our home.html file in here. But what I wanna do in this video is start to break apart our website so that 
you know, if you think about any website, they all have certain things in common. They all have the same headers on every single page, usually. They usually have all the same footers on every single page as well. And the stuff in the middle is sort of distinct for each page of the website. Well, we want to be able to do that too. We want to break apart our website and have one file that handles the headers and footers. And then that's sort of like a template that we can then change one time and it will appear on every page of our website. So that's what we're going to do in this video. But before we do that, I want to change our structure here of our templates directory. So we've got our events app, right? And it's the only app we have right now. But we could sort of conceive in the future, we might have other apps, we might add a blog, we might add who knows what, right? So if every one of those apps has a templates directory, our project is going to get confused. It's not really going to know which template to use in which app. So we can get around this by namespacing our templates here. So I'm going to come over here to templates, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this events. And we see there it is right there, I called it events, because our app is called events. So that's going to help me keep things clear in my own head going forward. So later on, if we create a blog app, I'll create a templates directory with a directory inside of it called blog, right, or whatever we name it. So now I want to move all of our templates, for instance, here into this events directory. So what I'm going to do, since we just started this, I'm going to right click on events, I'm going to create a new file, I'm going to go to file save as and I'm just going to call this home.html. Then I'm going to open up our old home.html file right here, I'm going to copy all of this. And I'm going to paste it into the new home file, and I'm going to save it. And I'm just going to delete this old home file. Yes, there we go. So now we've got templates slash events slash home. So to reference this, for instance, in our views.py file in our home function here, we need to come down here to where we rendered this thing. And you can see here we're rendering home.html. Instead, we need to render events slash home.html, right? And so that will then point to where we just move this home file. So okay, go ahead and save this. Let me just come back here and hit reload just to make sure that worked okay. And everything seems fine. We can go to 2020 slash March. And boom, we get March 2020. So that still works too. Okay, so now we're good to go. Now let's talk about templating out our websites. Django allows you to extend a base file or any file using blocks. And we do that really easily. We just come over here to our events directory instead of our templates directory, right click, and let's create a new file. And let's go to file save as and let's call this base .html. Now whatever we put on in this file would be the base of every other page of our website. So we can put header stuff here. And let me put some line breaks. And then let's put footer stuff here. And I'm going to put some more line breaks above that. Let me just copy and paste that. And now inside of here, we need a couple of template tags. So let's go like this. And let's go block and let's call this content. This is where the content of all of our web pages will go. And we need to close this tag. So we can now call end block, right? So inside of this, these two tags right here, this is where all of our other pages are going to sort of get pulled into. So our home page, for instance, this will sort of get sucked out of here and sort of dynamically pasted inside of there. Now we don't actually have to paste it in there. Django will do all of this on the fly as these things are called. So let's go ahead and copy this. We need to now modify our home.html file to accommodate for this. So up here at the top, First, we need to say, hey, use that base file. So we just type in extends, and then base.html. But remember, we moved this into the events directory. So now we have to go events slash base.html. Every time we reference any one of these things in something like this, we always have to put this events in front of it because it's now in the events directory, right? So this will allow us to extend that base file to use that base file. Now we just need to designate what in this file we want Django to sort of pull out and stick between these two tags in this file. So that would just be all of this stuff. So I can paste in our block tags here. And we have an open tag and a close tag. And for good measure, I might tab this in just so we can sort of see how this is all laid out. And okay, now we're good to go. So now anytime we go to this home page, it should pull this stuff on top and below. 
and then put our content in the middle. So let's test it out. Let's come back over here and let's hit reload. And here we see header stuff and footer stuff on our page. If we go to another page, so 2021 slash uh, June, boom, that's that same header and footer stuff gets put above and beyond and below there. So why is this cool? Well, we're going to have a nav bar or something. We'll do that in just a second. We're going to have footer stuff. Now, if we have a thousand pages of our website, and for instance, we've got a nav bar and we want to change one of the links on the nav bar. Well, now all we have to do is head over to our base.html file, uh, change it here. So new header stuff, save it. And now that will be reflected on every single page of your website. Hit reload, boom, it's on this page, it's on this page. Very cool. So that's templates, very useful. We're going to use these for everything. And now, Let's head over to Git Bootstrap really quickly. And we're going to use the Bootstrap CSS framework a little bit throughout this project. It's the most popular CSS framework. It's a way to make your website look really nice, really easily. So we can just head over to Docs. And I'm going to grab this starter template. And I'm going to put this in my base.html file. So instead of this stuff, and instead of this stuff, let's put all of that Bootstrap stuff. All right. So I'm also going to copy this because we need to move it. So this is a basic HTML template with bootstrap. And here is where the actual page starts where it says hello world. So instead of that, I want to put in my block content tags. And maybe we'll put a line break here too. So let's go ahead and save this. Now this should have bootstrapified our website, you can see right here, it's calling the uh, the bootstrap CSS. So that's good down here, it's calling some bootstrap JavaScript that handles things like drop down menus and animations and things like that. So okay, let's go ahead and save this head back over here to our website. Now I'm going to hit reload, pay a special attention to all this text, it's going to sort of slightly change font and maybe change color. So let's hit reload. Boom, you can see now it looks a little bit different. That's because we've bootstrapified our website. So very cool. We're now using this the bootstrap CSS framework. So what can we do? Well, let's add a quick nav bar. So let's head back over here. And let's come down here to components and let's look for nav bar. There it is. And we can scroll down here and here's a nav bar. Let's say we want to use this for our website. All we have to do is copy this thing. Now we could come back over here and just sort of paste it right here. But this page is already getting kind of full. There's a lot of stuff going on. So what I'm going to do is create another file in events and click new file. And let's go file save as and let's call this navbar.html. And then I'm just going to paste in all that bootstrap navbar code. So this will give us if we come back here and look a navbar that looks like this light gray, I like a dark navbar. So I'm going to modify this a little bit, just come up here to the very top and where it says navbar light, I'm just going to change that to navbar dark. And we also need to change it right there. So go ahead and save this file. Now we need to pull this file into our base.html file, wherever we want that navbar to go. And I want it to go right here, right above the block content stuff, right? So we can we can do this not with a block tag, we could use a block tag for this. But instead, I want to use a slightly different tag just to show you. And we're going to use the include tag. So we want to include, what do we want to include? Well, we want to include events slash navbar dot HTML. Go ahead and save this head back over here. Hit reload and boom, now we have a navbar. Very, very cool. So let's go ahead and customize this a little bit first. Eh, maybe we want this maybe we don't I'll just leave this in there for now because it looks cool. We might play around with it later. Uh, let's get rid of this disabled one right there. We don't really want that. So I'm going to go over to my navbar.html. And I'm just going to look through here. This is all HTML. So even if you don't know HTML, you can just kind of look through here and figure it out. I can see here it says disabled. So okay, that's probably what I want. I just come up here to the li tag that is sort of holding this disabled thing. And when I click on it, you can see the closing li tag here kind of highlights. So I know exactly what to get rid of. So I get rid of that. Let's go ahead and save this come back hit reload. Okay, so that disappeared. We've got this drop down. Yeah, we don't really need that right now. So let's get rid of that. So again, I'm just going to look around until I see drop down and there it is. And then I'm going to go up, up, there's the li tag. And I'm going to look around for the closing li tag. There it is way down there. So we can just oops, there we go, get rid of all of that. So delete that, save this reload it, make sure that was correct. All right, that's gone. I want to get rid of this home link too. I want our links to look like this, not like this. 
So let's get rid of this home one. So come up here, look around for home. Up oh, there it is. Go up to the LI, closing LI. Get rid of it. Okay. Hit reload. All right. Now instead of nav bar, let's change this to something else. So let's come up here. Up oh, here it says nav bar. And now I'm just going to call this my club for now. We'll probably change this. I'm going to save this. Hit reload. All right. Now it says my club. Now let's change this link to actually go to the home page. So to do that, I'm going to use a Django URL tag. And that's just that's just a regular tag. And we just type in URL. This is a URL tag. And then we call home. And we put that in quotation marks. Go ahead and save this. Why are we calling this home? Because in our URLs.py file, this path, the name we gave it is home. So okay, go ahead and save this. Come back over here. Hit reload. And now when we hover over here, it goes back to our home page. And we can go forward, hit reload. Now we're on this June page. But when we click here, boom, it goes back to home. So that's working. Okay, so let's play around with this link here. Say we want to create a future link. So right now we've got February. Let's say we want a link to March. Well, we could do that. Let's head back over here to our nav bar. And let's find that link tag. There it is. And I'm just going to call this March. And then for the URL, let's use a URL tag again. There we go. And we want a URL tag and we want this to point to home. Now we want to pass a couple of parameters. We want to pass the year, which is 2021. And we also want to pass the month, which is March. And that's how we just pass parameters in. All right. So go ahead and save this. Head back over here, hit reload. Now it says March there. And you can see down in the bottom left hand corner, if we hover over it, you can see it says 2021 March. We click on it, boom, it goes to March. We click here, boom, it goes back to February. February, March, the calendar changes, things update, and it's very cool. So we are moving right along. Our app is becoming more and more app-like. It looks more like a real website. And we've got some functionality here, some dynamic stuff going on. We've got some Django links. We've got a nice nav bar going here. And uh Looking pretty good. So that's all for this Django Wednesday video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.